A needle drops opportunities for silent souls to sound off with a few strokes of their pens on the boulevard in Detroit, within the house that Barry built. Motown's Black Forum, where freedom of expression lives. Please, Mr. Postman, I ain't too proud to beg. Deliver messages of love with hope for peace that spun 360 degrees from mountaintops of a king's dream to bold, brave voices so they'll soar as phoenixes hot with powerful words spewing from their tongues because stifled voices matter too. And they'll shine through, like the last poets on Motown's mic, breaking more barriers, invoking legacies of lyrical ancestors whose blessed footprints laid the groundwork for new eras of wordsmiths to set microphones ablaze, speaking their truths freely in safe spaces where the revolution will be televised, with poetic pioneers bringing verses to life on the page, then leaving them on stage. Get ready, my girls. Get ready, my guys. The quiet storms hit the end of the road. It's nation time in Barry's house. Bold, brave voice is gonna give it up. Letting the world know what's still going on in the 313. My Sharia Moore, I hear a symphony. It's playing poetry and it's really got a hold on me. Good evening and welcome to Motown Museum's grand finale showcase of Motown Mike, the spoken word. I'm Mikaela Norwood, the 2019 Motown Mike Spoken Word Artist of the Year and your host for this year's event. We are here inside Hitsville Next, the educational center of Motown Museum's newly expanded campus right on West Grand Boulevard in Detroit. As an irresistible force of social and cultural change, the legendary Motown catalog made its mark on not just the music industry, but society at large. Motown Mike the Spoken Word was founded in 2014 by members of the Detroit Spoken Word community in order to pay homage to Motown Records' Black Forum label. This label, founded in 1971, served as a venue for Black expression and education. The label served to capture the voices of poets and orators such as Langston Hughes, Stokely Carmichael, Elaine Brown, Ozzie Davis, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr whose moving and inspirational I Have a Dream speech was recorded by the label. Talented poets and lyricists from all over responded to our call for submissions by putting their pen to paper and composing captivating pieces inspired by the impact Motown Records had on our culture and how Motown's music changed America. These submissions were narrowed down and just 10 poets were invited to perform in the finale. Our finalists have been taken through six weeks of artist development sessions in preparation for this very moment. Throughout these six weeks, each finalist was assigned to a mentor to help polish their content, delivery, and stage presence. Our team of mentors consisted of nationally recognized award-winning and published spoken word artists, LaShawn Phoenix Moore, Natasha T. Miller, Mike Phelps, One Single Rose, and Sparrow. Our finalists also received a stylist consultation by stylist Keith Lowe and received professional fashion headshots by Detroit photographer Sarah Fleming. Finalists also took part in a masterclass with Motown Records Executive Vice President of Media Strategy and Lifestyle, Courtney Lowry. This year's winner will receive the title Motown Mike Spoken Word Artist of the Year, $3,000 in cash, be published by the legendary Broadside Lotus Press, be provided a two-hour recording studio session and further artist development opportunities with Black Forum label executives, and receive exclusive invitations to perform at Motown Museum and Detroit community events. Motown Museum could not provide opportunities like this for our poets and the community without the generous support of viewers just like you. You can support Motown Museum by visiting our website or texting Hitsville USA to 50155. Now, let's meet the panel with the hardest job tonight, our judges. 
Detroit native Aurora Harris is an award-winning African-American Filipina activist, educator, poet. Aurora is a board member of Broadside Lotus Press, a merger of two of Detroit's oldest poetry publishing houses that were established in 1965 as Broadside Press by Dudley Randall and in 1972 as Lotus Press by Naomi Long Magic. Aurora is a lecturer too at the University of Michigan Dearborn campus and has been writing and teaching poetry and spoken word for over 30 years. She is published in several poetry anthologies and journals. Her book, Solitude of Five Black Moons, won 2012 Penn Oakland Josephine Miles Excellence in Literature Award. Her latest poem on Detroit music can be found in a book called Respect, The Poetry of Detroit Music, 2020, by Michigan State University Press. So Aurora, what are you looking for in the 2022 Artist of the Year? I'm looking for dynamic poetry, good stage presence, eye contact with the audience, well-written poetry, well-delivered poetry, and so much more. A Patterson, New Jersey native, graduate and member of the Rutgers University Athletic Hall of Fame, Essence Carson is a 13-year WNBA veteran all-star world champion, philanthropist, speaker, and current senior manager of label relations at Motown Records Black Forum. Prior to her arrival at Motown Records, Essence started her career in the music industry at Priority Records, Caroline Records, now Virgin Records, of the Capital Music Group. Deeply rooted in the community, she has been the ambassador of Health Equity Initiative, nonprofit for over a decade. Continuously looking to change lives through entertainment and literary arts, Essence has also contributed to the Watts Community Corps Unity Games Crew of Los Angeles, California. And now I'm gonna transition to you, Ms. Essence. What are you looking for in the 2022 Artist of the Year? Man, I'm looking for dynamic poets. Um, poets yeah. that evoke emotion um, uh, in direct relation to, to the content, in direct relation to, the, uh, to Motown. Um, not only that, stage pr presence. Stage presence is very important. Your delivery, um, your delivery, the content, the creativity behind it all. I'm interested in the artistry of, of the performance. Um, so that's exactly what I'll be looking for. Donovan Livingston is an award-winning educator, spoken word poet, and public speaker. In 2016, his Harvard Graduate School of Education convocation address, Lift Off, went viral, reaching over 13 million views and prompting Hillary Clinton to praise its young graduates like Livingston, who make it clear that America's best days are still ahead. Since his pivotal speech, Livingston has been featured on CNN, NPR, BBC, Good Morning America, and in news outlets across Europe, Australia, India, and South Africa. His convocation address was published as a book by Spiegel and Grau in 2017. Drawing on personal experiences as well as scholarship, Livingston examines the role of culture, hip hop, and spoken word poetry in student experiences in higher and post-secondary education. And we are so happy to have your expertise here as a fellow spoken word artist. So is there anything with that lens of being a spoken word artist yourself that you're hoping to hear tonight? Um, I just really want artists to, to have fun. You know, when you get on stages, we don't know how, if, if the, the moment we're in is going to be the last. And so every time we're on stage, we have to seize it at all costs. And so the fact that these artists made it to this point is nothing to, you know, to, to, it, it's definitely something to be proud of. And I'm really yeah. hoping that uh, they make the most of this opportunity to share not only a piece of themselves, but to further our narrative um, in this country is artists, creatives, and folks who are able to, to transition our pain into immense joy. So I'm looking for all of that tonight and really excited to see them uh, use spoken word as a Yes, and thing. if that is what you are looking for, then I know you are in for such a great night. All of you are. So I am excited to see what our finalists have prepared for us. And I know our judges and all of you at home are as well. So let's get right to it and meet our first contestant. Ari Lane is a Detroit native who was introduced to poetry when she was just a little girl by her grandmother. 
after her grandmother taught her Ari's first poem, Myself, by Edgar Guest. As an outlet, she began writing and performing here and there throughout her adolescence. Back in 2019, she started committing to writing and performing on a more frequent basis. So through tonight's poetry piece, she wants to show how Motown is ingrained in our culture in a way that makes it timeless and is still just as relevant today as it was when her mom was growing up. After the audience and the judges hear me perform, I want them to feel good. I want them to feel warm and fuzzy and just like they are tapping into all those feels that you feel when you're listening to Motown. Like those things that you feel when you listen to all those old hits and grooves and yeah, I want them to feel good. Performing that Motown legacy, here is Ari Lane. Mom pulled out the records. A needle point transports me to Hitsville, 1959, where Barry Gordy Jr. changed the world as I would know it forever. Here, we learned you don't need sight to see or paint wonders of ribbons in the sky. Blind can still mean artists. Stevie painted vibrations, taught us to read braille frequencies. And wasn't it supreme how four tops could spin? Uh, how spinners could wear four tops or more? How smoky screams actually gave clarity, how Smokey could describe an action, person, place, or thing. Maybe it's just my imagination running away with me, but I swear I heard it through the grapevine. Motown gave us reasons to find sunshine on cloudy days, even if Papa was a rolling stone. With what the world is today, this ball of confusion we're on is the reason I can't help myself in the firm. Ain't no mountain high enough, I gotta keep on trucking. Didn't it birth generations with sexual healings that started with dancing in the streets to partying all night long, that turned folks into super freaks? Who made baby loves that grew up learning? You can't hurry, love, and that's still what's going on. Ain't Motown so junior, Martin Luther King? Ain't Barry Gordy Jr. so ah, uh, have a dream? Ain't it just like Motown to be so Motor City, so engine run, running so broken, watch timeless, and I'm teleporting, record still spinning. Take me to living room cleaning, Mary Well singing, happy birthday to your broken into four part harmony. If I with your woman pining. Hello, new love, my sherry. I'm more finding to first breakups. Singing neither one of us into a hairbrush. Graduations. Showing transitions from boys to men and girls to women where the end of the road is marked as a milestone and became tradition. Moonwalk me to the Jackson 5 Christmas. Rapping gifts. Singing Motown's greatest hits and the sounds of the temptations meant silent nights with mommy kissing Santa Claus just cause it's Christmas time. Whether what can make me feel this way be with my guy or my girl, oh Motown. How Langston Hughes of you amongst critics who didn't always get it in the world that got it. Taught me how to be so unstoppable, force meeting, immovable object. Taught me how words, cadences, and melodies break barriers. How guitar strings be like heartbeats. How we connect through our stories. It's the parallel of me and Motown. How we look so familiar even when the tracks of my tears learn to be so tears of a clown. Motown simply whispers, you keep hanging on, and I second that emotion. So don't be so uptight. Everything's all right while these records are going. Motown taught me to be the change I want to see. Helped make me three times a lady. It changed America because it changed me, and I know somebody's watching me. Motown magic is mirrored in my reflections, and isn't she lovely? The record stops. Suddenly, my mom looks so much like me. That's legacy. Yes! No, come on back here, Miss Ari! That was amazing! Judges, what a way to start off the night. Please, Aurora, tell me, what do you think about what Ari Lane just performed? I thought that was a great performance. She has a, right. a lot of a good stage presence, and I noticed some good eye contact there, and her delivery okay. was well. Okay, good eye contact. The stage performance, which is huge, especially in a virtual era, so that's amazing. Essence, what do you think? I loved, yes, I loved the performance. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with a, a word uh, anymore. Um, the, the stage presence, the delivery, the eye contact, 
um, the, the voice, the intonation in your voice, um, the way you nail certain words, and the most importantly, the, the content, right? The content, the creativity, you nailed it. Um, so, yeah. Yes, definitely. In terms of that content, I really felt like we went through a discography of America. So that was awesome for me. Donovan, what do you feel? Yeah, that's a, actually a great segue, Mikaela. Um, uh, you had this one line, um, Ari, uh, it changed America because it changed me. It struck me right in the heart. That's a bar. Like, I, I really, um, I'm a wordsmith and, and words really, really ring true for me. So I'm really it made me see your piece in a new light at that point. And you perform to everyone else's comments. You perform with your whole body. And so we really appreciate how you drew us into that experience. So thank you. Yes. Well, once again, thank you so much, thank Ari. You. And we cannot wait to see how things turn out, girl. <laughs> thank you. Our next contestant, she always found writing as a way to express herself. While she's used writing to explore her creativity for as long as she can remember, she credits her journey into spoken word to an assignment to write a poem about herself when she was in the third grade. Intrigued by how she could make different words rhyme together to paint a picture, she's been writing poetry ever since. Being born in Detroit, but moving southwest of the city, tonight's piece allowed Chi to get back into the culture of Motown. The story behind the piece was really trying to take people's mind and help them imagine being back in the 1960s, in the 1950s, when all of this was started in Detroit, because Detroit looks totally different than it did back then. And I wanted to make sure that with my words, I was able to paint that picture so people can go back to that mind frame, that mind state. So, transporting you back to Detroit in the 60s, here is Chi performing Motown. Barry Gordy. <laughs> See, that's a true Detroit player. With just $800, he broke the code of segregation. You see, lawmakers couldn't understand or, or comprehend the power of music, the power of love, not the power of intimidation from those billy clubs with which white policemen chose to hit. Nah, you see, Motown Records made real integrating smashing hits by displaying the way we danced, the way we sang, the way we expressed our love to one another. No, there will be no other. Without Motown Records to preserve our blackness, we wouldn't know soul on another level. We probably wouldn't even know our music as it is today. And that's because Motown Records molded the way the world hears our voices. And the longevity of Motown music is the proof. From the countless top charting solo acts to the endless iconic groups who have all been a part of our own families, be it on any day, but especially on holidays, during family reunions, wedding anniversaries, birthdays. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> Let me continue. You see, the creativity that goes into every song release is modified after one of the world's top brand automotive companies. So as you can see, success was always a guarantee. It still is. Have you recently Googled Motown Music's new releases? And then, when it comes to business, just to think, all of this was started with the $800 loan from Barry Gordy's family. Now, that takes true trust and commitment. And look how he and his team expanded it. From AR to HR, from one house with a few offices and a recording studio to a global musical empire whose sound waves are heard and echoed all throughout the world. <laughs> so, if you ask me, it's not really about how has Motown music changed America, because we know it has. We hear it and see it every single day. It's really about how has Motown music changed the way America hears and sees us? And most importantly, how has Motown music allowed us to change the way we hear and see ourselves? Hmm. I want you to imagine with me. Imagine being young, black, gifted, and free. 
living in the 1960s, calling Detroit, Michigan your home. You could raise your picket signs for racial equality in the labor workforce or raise your fists for civil rights. Or you could raise your voice for social unity while driving a Cadillac car. <laughs> the choice is yours. Peace. Yo, T, thank you so much. Look, come back. Come join me. Come join me, darling. How do you feel? I feel great. Yes. I feel, I feel great. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that, especially, like, the questions that you had us to actually consider. Like, how have we changed? How do we see ourselves differently as a result? What do you think about that essence? Let's go to you first this time around. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Um, I thought it was great. Um, the the delivery and stage presence, the way you worked uh, the stage, right? Um, I definitely appreciated that, right? Your eye contact, um, your the emotion that you use, your hand gestures, your body language. Um, definitely appreciated that. Uh, both of those were definitely on point. Um, and the fact that it flowed like a like a conversation, right? More more so like a conversation. Um, I, I like that route that you chose to go with that. Um, so yeah. Yes, the moments where you had us to pause, reflect, think on that, and I'm sure we all did. Donovan, what did you get out of Miss Chi's piece? I was going to say, Chi, that was phenomenal. I really like um, the deliberate pace with which you worked us through that piece. You didn't get too ahead of yourself and leave us trying to catch up. You really walked us through in a methodical way, and I think that's really important um, because it allows you to stay calm when you're on stage, and you did have a very calming reassurance um, about yourself, and I really appreciated that. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, Miss Aurora, we definitely want to hear from you. What are you thinking after hearing about that Motown piece? I really liked the cadence of the poem. I liked the delivery, the arm movements, emphasizing the words. I thought it was a really good prose poem that tells a story. I like the fact that, you know, she started out <clears throat> with the line that the, of the $800, but she went right back to it almost at the end. So she tied the, the two points of starting from nothing, and, you know, so it's present there, you know, and what can come out of it. So I really appreciated that. She, you know, she had, uh, again, good delivery and eye contact, but I really, I like the pacing of it and the content yeah. of it. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you so much. You, you gave us a lot to consider, a lot to think about. And now we all know how we can better use $800. So I'm, I'm taking notes. Thank you, Chi. Thank you. 23-year-old <laughs> Deja has been performing and writing poetry for 10 years. When she was just 10 years old, the Flint, Michigan native heard her cousin read an original poem. Hearing how her cousin could translate her feelings into poetry made Deja want to learn how to do the same and she has been using the expression of poetry ever since. Allowing herself to be completely free during the writing process, for tonight's performance, Deja penned a piece to show how a body of music can move people. I want the judges and the audience to feel inspired um, after hearing that story, after hearing that even through oppression you can still create magic, you can still create something beautiful. I want people to know that they can as well, just like the artists and the influencers of Motown did. I want everyone that hears this piece to know that we also have that same power. Performing the magic of Motown. Let's welcome Deja to the stage. The first party I ever went to was in a humid high school gymnasium. The balloons tied to the basketball hoops made us feel like fire. But baby love booming from the speakers radiated so boastfully through our bodies you could see it in our feet. America ain't know the magic in melody before she met the symphony that was inside of Diana and Stevie and Gladys and Michael. Amazing how a couple of drums, guitars, keyboards, a couple of horns can carry an entire body of people into joyousness, into peace. How bass has got to get out somehow so it chooses to use our bodies. America ain't know the balance 
voice in baritone before she met Billy Eckstein. And this is what I think she means when she says she has felt the voice of wind, of rain. This is what I think she means when she says she has let it carry her, let it tell of its stories through these instruments, how sound moves, how frequency transforms. These horns be what let this earth speak. These horns be what let this earth be heard, how their voices glide, how they whisper, even with all its noise, even with all its people talking all at once, it sounds one. We are all only stanzas, waiting to be picked, waiting to be played, waiting to be applauded for. We are all only waiting to be heard by someone. America. Ain't no the otherworldly kind of magic in melody before a snowy afternoon in January 1959. Even when a city drenched in Jim Crow, drenched in injustice, saturated in segregation and silencing, Eddie Kendricks had to have known the peace singing would bring his people asking us to hold on like that. And then we found our voice through scale. We turned our body to vessel. We sang our love, sang our worries. We sang whether the world around us was or was not ours, doctors say. Must have been a monumental pregnancy. As much composition America was carrying everyone in labor and delivery, jiving and twisting around singing, even if no one could actually hit the high notes harmony been showing folk how to dance through adversity how to sing through uncertainty how to listen when unheard America ain't no the majesty in music before she mothered Motown thank you yes and now we know the majesty of you. Thank you for welcoming us into that. Oh my goodness. There's so much I'm sure that everyone can say about what they just heard. But I'm going to pitch it over to Donovan first. Give us your thoughts about this dynamic piece. Yeah, we are all only waiting to be heard. That is a bar, Deja. That, that went crazy. I was really, um, really, I was into it before that, but that one really reeled me back in. Um, you are a whiz with wit imagery. I felt like I was at that party in high school with you, dancing and, and you know what I'm saying, trying to hit the high notes, but failing miserably. Um, really appreciate that. Um, it's super creative. Um, really grateful for you to be able to share this piece of yourself with us. I'm, I was honored to listen. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, Aurora, please give us some of your thoughts. What did you feel? How did this piece move you? I agree with Donovan with the, the nice imagery in the piece, and she had really good stage presence as well. Um, I like the lines, how, how sound moves, how frequency transforms, the horns be what let this earth speak. I really like that. It's got a nice rhythm, and it's got movement to it, the way that it comes out and the way that it's structured. So I think, I think you did a great job. Thank you, thank you. And last but certainly not least, we gotta hear from Essence. How did you feel about this performance tonight? I thought it was an amazing uh, delivery, amazing stage presence. Uh, you drew me in from the start. Um, your intonation, the way uh, you, you layered your words, the way that you created the story, you, it was it was like I was watching um, a, a movie in real time, right? So I, I definitely appreciated the, the storytelling and how you laid that out. Um, I mean, overall, I, I think you did an amazing job. Thank you once again for being here tonight and best of luck to you tonight, Deja. Thank you. <laughs> Now residing in Columbus, Ohio, this competition has allowed our next contestant to get back to her Detroit roots, where she was born and raised. Performing under the stage name Soul Candy, Jasmine has been around poetry her entire life, but it was participating in Citywide Poets, an after-school program at her high school, where she really got into spoken word. Wanting to incorporate her personal experiences growing up around Motown with her mom, Soul Candy pinned this piece 
to show the impact Motown had not just on Detroit, but on the entire world, from the artists to the entrepreneurial side of the business. I want the uh, judges and audience to walk away with a feeling of nostalgia. I want my poem to not only bring back memories of people that had uh, their, their personal experiences with Motown, I want them to understand the impact that it's had. So, here is Soul Candy performing her piece, Birth of Culture. When I say this, I'm not saying it just for clout. When I say Stevie Wonder really took my mama out, came to Motown for a press tour. It was her birthday on August the 4th. You had a limo for her and her friends and surprised them all with dinner plans. And it was more than a dream hearing the museum phone ring. And my mom answered to Coretta Scott King. All the time Puff Daddy came for a visit and gifted me a necklace that was inexpensive. These are just a few memories I witnessed as a child that wouldn't have happened without Motown. January 12th, 1959 is where we begin this timeline. Motown, Motown, Hitsville, talent found. Your phase wouldn't exist if it weren't for the people on this list. During a time of racial divide, Motown's music was standing in the shadows of love, bringing folks together and rising above. Its music will have couples dancing in the street, shouting, you really got a hold on me. At a time when being a mixed couple was rough, the fire and desire between Rick James and Tina Marie will have you shouting, ain't no mountain high enough. It don't matter if you black or white, it takes two to end racial divide. And Motown's music made it as easy as ABC, one, two, three, to bring folks together and make them happy. The smooth temptations of Motown attracted artists from far and near. It had every act saying, I'll be there. The miracles of Stevie Wonder's gifts contributed to some of Motown's biggest hits. Motown's music charted at least four tops, taking over R&B, rock, and pop. Motown was more than just a label. It created icons of music like fables, Green Eyed, Smokey, Dreamy, Supremes, and Soul for Marvin Gaye, just a few inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Modern music recreated by Motown's influence. The Vandellas, Jimmy Mack, sampled an MC DJ's Coming Back. Marvin Gaye's I Want You in 76, sampled in Mary J. Blige's 94 Be Happy hit. And is it just my imagination running away with me? Or was that just sampled by the group 1975 and 2020? Barry Gordy made his mission clear. His music was for anyone that could hear. An $800 loan flipped into a multi-million dollar empire with timeless music that never gets tired. It left the nation at all and locals inspired with songs safe for a club or a church choir. An iconic catalog from all the artists acquired with haters lurking, trying to conspire, spitting very superstitious propaganda like gunfire. The Gordy family values contributed to Motown's rise. Hard work, faith in God, self-reliance, and family ties. I heard it through the grapevine that the Beatles covered several Motown hits, but white artists copying black music was no secret. Like Marvin Gaye's Gotta Give It Up hit illegally copied by Robin Thicke. In many ways, Motown was a pioneer, and its impact on other labels was quite clear, launching several musical talent careers, including the lesser-known Swingin' Tigers and Golden Harmoniers. Motown was special because its music was mainstream, developing triple threats that could dance, act, and sing, accepted by all races and played on any scene. In the aftermath of Black Bottom and Paradise Valley, Motown created a new cultural legacy. After Black Bottom was replaced with I-375s, Motown's birth helped Detroit's music to revive. Motown didn't change America. Motown is America, a legacy rich in culture, a style mimicked by culture vultures. Can I get a witness to how sweet it is to see how long Motown's influences live? Thank you, thank you so much for sharing your work with us no. today. That was beautiful, as are you. Thank you. And I have to say, there were so many facts. Like, we went to school today. We went to school today. How did you feel in the school room today, Miss Aurora? Go ahead and tell us something maybe you even learned through this piece. I really like the way that there was the consistency of Motown included in the poem. And how she, I like the way she rapped at the, at the beginning and then went into the rest of the piece with facts about Motown. I like the way it's kind of tying the, the, the past to the present, yeah. or recent yeah. past, right? So I thought the, the stage del delivery was pretty good. And the, overall, the poem has good content in it. Yes, yeah, I definitely felt that flow in the beginning. I was like, OK. Spoken word or rap? I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. It's your world, girl. Essence, let us know how you felt about this piece. 
Uh, I just want I want to piggyback on that, right? Uh, spoken yeah. word or rap. Uh, I, I I appreciate that, especially coming from um, on the on the label side, right? The way you segregate right into the poem, um, and then um, and then the rest of the content, amazing content, all factual, right? Uh, it was definitely a history lesson for many, um, and so the content was definitely on point. <laughs> Kudos to you, kudos to you. Donovan, let us know what you're feeling after hearing this piece. Yeah, if I could borrow a line from Robin Thicke, who borrowed a line from Marvin Gaye, you certainly blurred the lines between uh, spoken word and rap, and I really, really like that. As a, as a hip-hop artist myself um, who toes that line, often I felt I felt connected to that in that way. Um, but more importantly, I really saw how the piece was connected to you. It was squarely about Motown. You was dropping so much knowledge, but at the same time, there's a almost a, 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 a almost like a, an endear, endearing connection to the city of Detroit, to Motown, the artists that call it home. And I really feel like um, this is very much a reflection of who you are as well. And I. As I said in the beginning, authenticity means the world to me, and I really saw that in your piece. So thanks, fam. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Look, thank welcome you. back home. I know you're going to be going back to Ohio, but we're yes. happy to have you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Our youngest competitor of the night, Ife, is just 17 years old. Looking for a way to process her feelings after the 2018 Parkland High School shooting, Ife started writing poetry. Finding herself needing to process her feelings again of being lonely during this global pandemic, she once again turned to poetry as a means of therapy. Performing in competitions just like this for the past two years, Ife was inspired by classic Motown songs and how they transported her back to what was going on at that time. I hope that the audience and the judges get the feel of the Gen Z vibe from these uh, Motown songs and really understand the view of like a youth activist or just kids today and how we feel about the world um, and hearing it through these same songs that they grew up on. So performing, the music is revolution. Let's welcome Ife to the stage. Music looks a lot like revolution. Notes, curled fists, marching along the staff, voices ringing out in harmony, all longing to be heard. It's hard to think of revolution and not hear its music. Kings prophesizing their dreams, people filling the street, the heartbeat of a country. You can't look into the eyes of the youth and not see the twinkle of revolution. <laughs> a sparkle of change intertwined with their youthful glee, the youth still see everything. The sound of young America's revolution. The sound of young America is Motown. <laughs> Changes a head nod and foot tap and finger snapping type of song. It's Marvin Gaye asking us, what's going on? And still searching for an answer. But at least now we're looking. It's living for the city and the wonder of why I don't want you to thrive. Stevie put his hip to this systematic trip over some dope drums and synth C. I guarantee what war is good for is absolutely nothing. We say woke to the world around as we scream it loud. These are the soundtracks of life woven into my history. Music puts melodies to thoughts. The things we still refuse to say sound sweeter over song. The things we still refuse to see dance wildly through our minds. Music looks a lot like revolution. A mic is curled into my black fist. Blackness is fresh picked froze and synchronized steps. It's two cool tuxes and chorus claps. It's soul and R&B and pop and rock and anything else that graces our tongue because our music is universal. Spanning space and time, black and white, from Cali to Philly, folks still get down to a Midwest sound, singing about they girl, but how they very superstitious. Got me saying, what you know about that? <laughs> Forgetting that music stays in our soul, connecting us all, because no matter who you are, the Supreme still gets you to stop in the name of love. <laughs> It's hard to think of revolution without hearing its music. The backing track to the movie of our lives, because without it, we'd be lost in the silence. Trying to find our way, but something pulls us back here. Back to Detroit. Back to Motown. 
a voice in the quiet leading us all back home. Ife, wonderful job, wonderful job. Listen, before we even throw it to the judges, I just want to hear from you, like, how are you feeling as the youngest competitor here tonight? Uh, I'm definitely nervous, shaking a little bit, <laughs> uh, but it was, it was really fun to perform my piece, especially in front of these judges. Yes. And I'm just happy to have the chance, you know, being the youngest one here, being pretty <laughs> young, pretty young on the stage. Yes, you, know? <laughs> you are the revolution. <laughs> Music is the revolution, and so are you. So we are honored to have you here tonight. Thank you, yeah. Donovan, please let us know how you felt about Ife's performance tonight. Yo, Ife, that was fantastic, homie. Uh, you know, thank you for sharing that piece of yourself with us tonight and for having the courage to grace the stage. That takes a lot to pick up a pen in the first place, but to develop and grow and feel confident enough to share on this stage, that, that speaks volumes to your craft. And I'm really grateful to... Um, have uh, had that piece fall on my ears tonight. Essence, another strong black lady herself. We want to hear from you. <laughs> oh, I loved it. Um, I definitely loved it. From from the opening line, you demanded the attention, right? You grasped my attention. And what I like most importantly is that you evoked emotion, right? We felt every word that you said. Um, and that's what I like, right? Um, that That's a hidden gem in artistry right getting your audience right your listener to to connect and feel what you were feeling at the time you were actually writing thank you, thank you. yes it was clear you came prepared okay <laughs> you, we got some stiff competition tonight aurora let me know how you felt about this piece tonight i thought it was a a, a great consistent delivery I liked the way that everything about the performance was coordinated. It appeared very consistent with your, your body movement, your hand movement, your facial expressions, your hands seem to um, articulate and point, go right with the words, right? Uh, emphasize the words. Thank you so much. Yes, definitely a timely poem. I thank you so much for joining us tonight. You, you did amazing. Me. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And we cannot wait to keep the show going. We are just halfway through the competition. More to come. Ashley fell in love with words and is a writer at heart. Being a part of a big family, writing was a way for her voice to be heard. When she took a poetry class in college and went to an open mic for extra credit, she saw how she could combine her love for writing and competition into something she fell in love with, spoken word. Performing under the stage name Galaxy since 2008, she tasked herself to combine the stories of Black Forum Label's inception and Motown Records' success with a creative edge for tonight's performance. So the story behind my piece is literally about collaboration and it's about how we can't always get to a destination with just one route. Like you need help. I am all about working with other people, you know, gaining knowledge, networking. Galaxy wants you to get ready for a history lesson in poetry form. Performing collaboration, here's Galaxy. The inception of Motown was Four years before MLK's I Have a Dream speech, three days before his birthday, two years after he appeared on the cover of Time magazine, one year after he was wrongfully arrested and Barry Gordy living a completely different life never imagined how their worlds would collide. He was a creator carefully crafting a future focused on black voices to amplify our culture, a musician. Displaying his musical mastery, streamlining hit after hit, building a foundation, but what does collaboration look like? A dream within a dream. The voice of black America meeting the sound of black America where poets and preachers became artists recorded racial injustices ripping through the R&B charts, hearing the hues of Langston. It's versatility. Like, who will survive in America? And little Baby at the Grammys. It looks like pushing the limit, going against the grain. It looks like 1970s, sounds like Black Forum, feels like enough is enough. When the revolution could not be televised, 
We recorded it, putting Black Power onto soundtracks, marching with a million men. We went from having a dream to dreams deferred to chasing our dreams again. It's leaving a mark. Growing, building, trend setting, and chart topping. Motown is like a verb, synonymous for classic, closely related to Black culture, also known as the first. We are the blueprint. We still have the music ingrained in the frames of our family portraits. You can hear the music in the memories. And we still get married to ribbon in the sky, make love to let's get it on singing, sign sealed and delivered to celebrating. Anytime I hear, I guess, you'll say, a temptations line. Cause it's like knowing your black history change is knowing that collaboration is American history. It's not fitting into a mold, it's creating your own. It's opportunity, a relaunch. Realizing that black people needed a black platform to protect black voices and bold choices. But I, 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 wonder, I wonder if Barry knew Four years before MLK's I Have a Dream speech, three days before his birthday, all these years later, the ripples he would make when he decided that music wouldn't be the only records he would create. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank that you. was Thank awesome. You. <laughs> Incredible. I see we're matching too with yes. us. The Green. two live Green Crew. <laughs> Let's talk to Aurora first. Aurora, tell us, what were you thinking about Galaxy's performance tonight? I thought it was a great performance, and I really like this historical walk in the poem of how Motown came to be and what it represents. I think, you know, I really like that um, it's, a, it's a teachable poem. You had some good imagery in it. You had a really good delivery. I was about to say the same thing, the imagery. It made me feel as if music was pouring out from the walls. I love that. Essence, let me know what you were thinking about tonight's performance with Galaxy. Oh, I have to agree. I mean, some of the wordplay, I, I really like the line, uh, a dream within a dream where preachers, where, where poets and preachers become artists. You know, when you think of art in itself, it's a reflection of life, right? So, you know, um, just them becoming artists and, and, and Mr. Gordy having that um, that vision. Um, but you're, you're pointing that out. Also, the hues of Langston, I love that line as well. That was an amazing line. I like that word play there. Delivery was great. Just It was, it was a history lesson, right? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. When I hear the, the hues of Langston, I'm like, man, since we got it on camera, I'm not going to take that bar. I'm going I'm to let you keep that. <laughs> And I'll write something else later. <laughs> Donovan, let us know what you're feeling about this poetry tonight. Yo, as a fellow lover of the stars, I really appreciated uh, this piece. I think um, for me, one of the things that resonated was I really liked how you ended where you started. Um, so you brought us, you know, full circle and, and reflecting on Martin Luther King and putting that in context with Barry Gordy's founding of, uh, of Motown. I really like the framing of the piece around this question around what this collaboration looked like. And while I was listening, the whole time I was wrestling with this idea that social change doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? We really need to lift one another up. And Motown is one of those, one of those places, one of those spaces, one of those communities where um, you see people coming together and celebrating, in celebration of Black life and culture and what we can do um, in moments of intense suffering and intense joy. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm. That, that feedback just gave me so much life. I really wanted to let people know, like, you don't have to do it by yourself. Like, yeah. we are stronger together. And that was really what I wanted to convey with that collaboration piece. So I'm happy it, it did. Uh, it did what it was supposed it to do. Yes. It landed. Girl, yes. thank you so much for being here, Galaxy. We absolutely loved it. Thank you so much. Yes, the competition is stiff, but we absolutely enjoyed your piece. So thank you for being thank here. Thank you. All right, thank you all. <laughs> T. Elise took her first stab at writing poetry when she was in high school, but when no one seemed interested, she put it to the side for a few years. She revisited poetry when she started teaching as a way to keep her from walking off the job and redirect her energy. And she's been writing and performing ever since. 
Reminiscing on all the stories about Motown she heard from her mom, dad, and godfather, with tonight's piece, T. Elise wants to tell the story of Motown beyond the music and wants to get people thinking about the entrepreneurial spirit that Barry Gordy Jr. had. If they walk away after hearing my piece saying, I can envision when people are dancing, to the, you know, dancing to the music or, you know, um, it makes them feel nostalgic about, you know, when Motown was here and that was a real thing. You could really go out and see those artists. If they come out of the poem saying she made me think about all that or you just feel good and it makes you want to turn on a Motown song, mission accomplished. Born and raised right here in the Motor City, let's welcome T. Elise performing Motown more than a sound. They say a true artist will never compromise their soul. That's because it takes true enterprise to dodge doubt and go bold. To walk towards a reality that no one else can see means to go farther with a different kind of armor to make happen what is meant to be. And when destiny steers that car, there could be no limits on a star. And the mere existence of Motown illustrates this notion. They understood the assignment, regardless of the world's climate, and mixed innate talent with tenacity to get that right potion. On a musical mission to innovate, entertain, and inspire, fueling rhythmic fires of new artistic desires. Motown is more than a sound. More than a building a few street lights from downtown. More than a house with creaky floors and doors with wood train screens. Motown is sacred ground where would-be stars took the first steps toward their dreams. On a national stage, this story played out loud for the world to see. A young man took his stand, made his mogul plan, a whole culture's reality. See, back then, it wasn't much brown skin on popular music, but when a soothing serenade sings, bodies can't help but to move to it. And when that new sound surrounds better than anything ever heard before, entranced, the kids danced, and followed those melodies through even unopened doors. Wherever that sound dared to be, musically, lovers from everywhere came. It was then when the tune changed, never again to be quite the same, evolving from the top of its rhythm down to its lyrical core. Motown created the sound that the world was starving for. And yes, it's our time we open up this conversation because musically there is no real new revelation. Motown has always stood sound as the definition of impact. Please believe me and check this here fact. In 59, when segregation was a sign of the time, Barry Gordy started a company with young visionaries and big goals. Now try to protest how his success is still not one of the best stories ever told. It is a must and a plus. All history buffs acknowledge Motown's relevance because no other music entity has set a bigger precedence, gave us Miracles, four tops, temptations, oh my, raised generations on the stylings of Marvin Gaye and the genius of Stevie Wonder, volume set high. Motown is the sound that guided the world that Motor City way and still inspires new artistry to this very day. I'm right now because of what they wrote then, proving I'm on par to be a star, even if I don't win. And that's Motown where we get down, because it's so much more than just the sound. It's the birth ground of ambition that leads to fortune and fame. So I hereby proclaim it is my honor to put much respect on the Motown name. T. Elise, thank you so much. <laughs> thank my you. goodness. Let me know, Donovan. Tell me about how you feel about this poetry and even more importantly about the jerk. T. Elise, thank you so much for um, for your words and your time. Um, it was brimming with confidence in ways that I wish more folks would embody when they enter a room. It's like you, as soon as you spoke, we we knew to listen because of how you carried yourself. And that I'm sure it, it seems like that is how you are when you're not on stage for some reason. Like the the fullness of your personality came out and I really appreciated that. Yes, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us and we want to hear the thoughts of Aurora as well. Tell us how you felt, how this poem made you feel. Oh, it made me feel great. There was a lot of energy behind the poem 
and it was consistent. The theme was carried through very well. Essence, let us know how you felt about this performance tonight. Um, so overall, great job. I, amazing energy, amazing confidence. Um, your delivery demanded attention. Um, it, it, it definitely kept me engaged. Thank so you. great job. Thank you Thank all. all. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. Thank you all. Where will we be without our fabulous judges? Know, and where right? will we be without you, Miss Thing? Ah! Thank I'm you. putting respect on your name. You, you laid it down tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we only have a few more contestants left, so stick with us. Ten years ago, Peniel was sitting in the audience at an open mic when the host picked her out of the audience and encouraged her to come on stage to perform. While she had been writing for the past five years, she'd never really written and performed a spoken word piece. Excited by the challenge, she got on stage and has been writing and performing ever since. After listening to Motown songs for hours, Pinelle decided she wanted to show the peace and healing that Motown's music brought to the world. I want the audience and the judges to feel like they can go forward. Like, if they listen to Motown or if they have anything to do with Motown, they can be motivated to live life and be encouraged and just be excited. Performing, assemble the party train, Let's welcome Pinelle to the stage. What has Motown done for America? Could it be because it's built on standards it houses the understanding that you can feel it in your soul? Wakes up them old bones, gets them moving when funkiness rails the tracks to rhythm of a well-set vein. You can hear it in the choo-choo of the crew. Coupled and compressed instruments alongside heaven sent vocals run the track, then stack master upon master upon masterpiece grows Motown. Spreads love that resonates deep within the beat. It's always the first few seconds that get you intrigued, like bum bana, bum bana, bum bana, bum bum bana, bana, and we still get sunshine on those cloudy days because it's conceived and nurtured some of the greats. Father didn't pass down many of its traits. It's been a freight for talented, wonderful genius. Allowed prerogative to dream the impossible and live its reality, it's tangible. Manageable for us to trust that we could view the world through the feeling of freedom that was perceived. Vibrations in chords and tones in their tunes instantly make us move us and shake us. Our hearts beat to the greet of its unification. It's basics. Teaches the world patience. Taking liberties to help integrate by firming in beliefs, it's unbending. Motown helps humanity heal, rebuild, unlocks potential essential to trains. I can feel it in my brain. Unbranded eloquence and stammering derails the mindset of when it rains, it pours. Showering entrepreneurs with blessings, investing in self and vision. It's freeing to power on with a locomotive as mighty as a dream and a dream as strong as a team. That gets the soul well lifted. Sings to our capabilities. Mainstreams, informs, and unifies inequality. It has set the boogie in the bouts of the world and entices us to move our dance. It's unbreakable because it releases from its soul. Picks up passengers along the way and begins to move their souls. Man, that's Motown. Keeping the world motivated. It has cultivated our people to embrace life and give in actuality. It keeps us in love, entertained. Gets the soul of the world boogie and stays funky as it fills with peace, offers healing, thrilling our hearts with joy and instills hope. So let's coast these tracks until you get what you need. It allows the possibility for us to follow our calling. You must live within the quickening. I believe in my heart. Presented to us for growth of this world. Motown is a God sent art. Like that sea that Moses parted. Both memorable. This Hitsville hits a little different. Because not only is it transitional, it's electrifying. Giving my first opportunity to Essence. Go ahead, let us know what you felt about this poem tonight. First off, I wanna say that I loved how you intertwined the melodies within the piece, right? I, I love that. <laughs> um, your, your delivery was amazing, was awesome. You kept, you kept me engaged the entire time. You demanded my attention. 
the entire time. Um, you definitely stayed on topic throughout it all. I mean, and it did feel like a party train, right? The, the energy was there. Uh, I loved it. I loved the energy. It really did make me feel that, hey, this is, this is a party train. And I want to roar. Come on, join our party train over here. Let us know how you felt about this piece. Hi. I really liked the fact that it was positive. There was an energetic performance and it was very consistent. You have a great stage presence. I like um, the lines where you open with what has Motown done for America and then you have, you know, you talk about love and how Motown helps heal and rebuild and unlocks potential essential to trains and you could feel it in your brain. I really like the rhyme. You've got good internal rhymes there, but I like the message, I really do, and I like the energy. Thank you. Yes, and just so we can get everyone all aboard because I'm going to run this train analogy <laughs> all the way to the end. Donovan, come on over. I got you, I got you, fam. Um, this is dope. Uh, to Aurora's point, I had healing, rebuilding, hope, all written down in my notebook too. Those were uh, themes that you carried so beautifully throughout. I really liked um, to uh, Essence's point, um, this sort of, the question, your, your poem was written in response to a question and the question, um, your body communicated the absurdity of the question, right? It's almost like a how dare you not know what Motown has given us uh, as a people, as a country. And you you answered it in a way that was, um, that was powerful. Wow. You are, he makes poetry when he's not even trying. The next thing you pin, pin, yell, listen. And we are all awaiting that time. But for this time, we absolutely loved you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, indeed. And we only have about two more people left to go. So we're going to keep this party train rolling. Amber performs under the stage name Coffee Dark and Sweet and considers poetry her first language. She was inspired by poetry as early as four years old, and the first thing she learned to read was a poem. Proud to be Detroit born and raised, she wants to shine a light on the magic that is Detroit's rich artist culture and compose tonight's piece to show how much Motown means to her as an artist. If they are from Detroit, I want them to feel seen. I want them to feel related to. I want them to feel proud, as proud as I am. If they're not from Detroit, I want them to hurry up and get here and figure out what's going on, see how raw the art and, and experience really is here. It's really beautiful. Performing when music means something. Here's Coffee, Dark and Sweet. Once upon a time, long ago and right now, Talent and tenacity birthed sound with Motown. And she was born right here in my city. A beat bold, bear your soul, and drop the mic city, where heated debates, hot dates, and deep conversations are converted into soulful chords that serenaded the nation. Detroit convinced us all to lift our voices a little higher. What other place you know turned the whole country into a choir? California tapping their feet to the rhythm of our song, and Carolina shaking it up like the salt that we walk on. America rejoiced forever to the Detroit gospel. No matter what state, we all relate to the rhythm of God's movements. One family sparked a flame that changed the world. Made from scratch in my hometown, I'm talking about my girl. The golden bell that rang inspired the world to sing and changed the face of the planet. A lyrical big bang. Michael Jackson saved our dreams from being outlined in chalk, bringing the stars down to earth with the moonwalk. And Stevie's words made you wonder what was possible in you. When Martin spoke, you knew you needed a little more town too. More love, more community, Inspired to hug your neighbor, to take a bite out of life and really savor its flavor. Making hard work and classy from Motor City to your hood. Turning trauma into triumphant notes that feel good. Experience here is real. There is no luxury of facade, so we produce luxurious art that takes your mind for a ride. Generation after generation, all singing along. All our babies' babies gonna wanna know what's going on. 
When music means something, it breaks walls down like Jerusalem. Motown elevated creatives and got the world to create in unison. Broke down every stereotype in sight and provided new vision. Don't keep your eyes wide shut. Get a glimpse of what you missing. In Hitsville, USA, we take a licking and keep ticking. Punching clocks and breaking ground, we strike it rich and keep digging. Sunshine or winter time, it don't matter. We keep going. From picket lines to picket signs, we keep growing. Spreading love, coming in hot like a heat wave. Could cross the country freely on ways that we paved. So much fruit to bear when the seeds are sown from your heart. Expressing views and addressing issues with raw art. Motown made beats for the undefeated to go dancing in the streets to. Fortified by book smarts and street views. We recognize ourselves when music reflects the soul. Temptations tempting with lyrics that refuse to let you go. Refined by time like good wine, graceful with age. With a Motown record on your lips, your city is center stage. Doesn't it feel good to be the wheels in a movement? Especially when it didn't require nothing but grooving. War will always be good for absolutely nothing. No matter what we fighting, we are the light and peace when music means something. Beautiful job, lovely lady. <laughs> awesome, you. awesome. Tell me, how do you feel in this moment? I feel heard mm. and seen in yeah. a way that not only elevates my experience as a, a black woman from Detroit, but my experience as a black female artist in Detroit and really like drive home what being from here and being associated with Detroit and Motown mean to me. Yes, <laughs> listen, and it was so beautiful to hear from you what music means to you. So tell Thanks. us, Essence, what does this poem mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, she hit it home in the last stanza with uh, war yeah. will always be good for absolutely nothing. No matter what we fight and we all delight in peace when music means something. Um, that, that definitely stood out to me and it, and it brought it back home, right? Um, from your starting point to the end. Um, I mean, you, you took us on, on, on a walk, right? On a walk and you explained why Motown is important, why the music that we create is, is, is important um, throughout history. You know, not only now, not only then, but throughout the entire course of history. Thank you. Listen, Donovan, we want to hear from you. What were your thoughts about Coffee Dark and Sweet? As a country boy from North Carolina, I really appreciated that uh, Carolina shout out you had early on in the piece, homie. But um, but on, on the real, I think um, this was a beautiful love letter to Detroit. Uh, the way you came in, um, be bold, bear your soul, drop the mic city like that. That 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 lured me in a little bit to to see where you were going, and I was I was grateful for that because we have this um there's this like sort of like a myth of making it out making it out of your city or your block or your neighborhood to see the world, and you really made it seem as though you didn't have to leave to be able to have access to the world. You 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 followed that point home with the um, turning the whole country into a choir and then pointing out different parts of the globe where Motown reigns supreme. And I really appreciated how you made me feel local, um, even though I'm not physically in Detroit. Aurora, let us know, how did you feel about this piece? I felt like the spirit of Detroit really came through. And that, I don't know, some of the, the words and the delivery and the cadence and the rhythm and the rhymes were what was it was like listening to a sermon to me as a creative storyteller and artist poetry is just one of the mediums that our next performer ben will uses to practice live and performing arts he's been writing since the third grade when he wrote a poem about not liking his teacher and after seeing how great the piece was, the poem was entered into a competition, won a bunch of awards, and he has been writing ever since. Inspired by Barry Gordy's resiliency, Ben composed tonight's piece to encourage everyone to manifest and pursue their dreams, while adding in nuggets of humor to make his piece an experience. I want the audience, I want the judges, I want whoever experiences this piece to feel inspired. I want them to stand a little bit taller. I want them to believe in themselves a little bit more. 
I want them to feel compelled to move closer in the direction of that thing that they've been telling themselves that they cannot do and to recognize that they have power inside of them to manifest uh, that, that dream, that goal um, that they desire to pursue. So closing out tonight's performances, here is Ben Will performing Griot's Tale, The Blue Building on the Boulevard. Gather round, good people. Come closely into this light. Allow the luminescence to lure you into what we declare to be a safe space, a sacred place that welcomes all, regardless of race, creed, class, or any other construct man-made to confuse you. This glorious institution, this edifice of enlightenment, this abbey, filled with sacred texts and hymns enshrined behind beautiful blue walls, was made for each and every one of us. And I ain't talking about no church. We call it Hitsville, and the man with the God-given plan to sacrifice his all to share messages of love and hope with the entire world does sound similar to Jesus when I say it like that. But in our story, his name was Barry, and Barry was begging his big sister to hold $20 times two times 20 to get the 800 he needed to start a record label, and Esther said, you might be bold asking the hoe, cause ain't you the same little brother who had to fold after opening a record store that never sold a thing? And I'm certain that Barry looked himself in the mirror that morning, pushing past the doubt of what he couldn't be to proudly proclaim, my failures don't define me. And regardless of what I did or didn't get, my spirit told me I ain't done yet. Cause he looked at Esther after she accurately audited and assessed each one of his missteps and replied, yep, that's me and I'm gonna take that money and build a legacy. It's the resiliency for me. Something like a fairy tale, but baby Rumble still skin ain't got nothing on this. He sponged on the gold. Barry started spinning out hits, forging gold, platinum, diamonds. If you get my gist, what kind of wizardry is this? Barry is an alchemist to harness the potential of a house rundown in the same town that tried to clown you converting kitchens and garages into his prized laboratory, his workshop, his assembly line that didn't just produce stars, it produced wonder, supremely, marvelously tempting things. Barry made well springs, they say, for men drank from it and rose to the top, they say. The closer you get to it, you'll realize it sounds better when it's a little smoky. They say, Barry Watts gave a young man the power to walk on the moon. <sighs> Something strange happens inside of that blue building on the boulevard. And that's the secret, ain't it? Cause in the building, Barry brought between a funeral home and a salon in the space between the birth of beauty and death, Barry made magic and that's the moral. Yeah, Barry made Motown and Motown made America, made us all some incredible music, but Barry also gave us hope. He gave us love, he gave us power and he taught us all in the music that when you quiet that voice that tells you what you can't do, you will find your magic, too. Wow. What <laughs> a performance. What a way to end everything. That was absolutely amazing. I legitimately need to know, have you taken acting classes? Yeah, I'm an actor. Okay, I'm, then I'm, there I'm, it is. I'm, then I'm, there I'm, it is. Did y'all feel the, the, the theater. theater of it? There it is. I was like, this is... He's a fellow theater kid. I feel <laughs> one with him right now. I feel like you and me are together. We are one. Thank you so much for doing that performance. Aurora, I just want to go ahead and throw it to the judges because this was absolutely incredible. Aurora, tell me, what are you feeling from this piece? I thought that this was a greatly performed prose poem. And it had some really good images. It was a little humorous, but it stayed consistent with the Motown thing. Yes, Donovan, tell us how you're feeling. Probably the same, but we want to hear it out of your mouth. <laughs> you know, as the son of a pastor, you took me to church, bruh. I really appreciate <laughs> I really, really appreciate that. Um uh there were metaphors galore. I really like the like the alchemy and the, the diamonds and the gold peak part. The uh, I think my favorite though was the space between beauty and death when you're talking about the physical placement of the blue building, right? Like that that I think is resonates in ways that um, you know are, are really beautiful and powerful. But the poem was written on your face. If my computer was like muted and all I saw was you pantomiming, I would have gotten the same thing. And I think that speaks to 
um, the power of your stage presence as well. Your 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 theater kid came shining through, but more importantly, I think the the theme um, uh, of Motown and its importance and relevance really hit home. So yes. kudos the to you, The theater fam. kid and you did it for us. You did it for all of Hopefully us. Not too much. All, no, it was okay. good. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. But essence, you know, it, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters <laughs> more what essence thinks. What are, what are you feeling? A lot of people in this story, right, the story of Motown focus on what happens, you know, um, uh, after they become well, after it becomes well established, right? You set the story before all of that, you know, like a brother, a, a conversation between a brother and a sister. I loved it. I loved it from um, beginning to end. Um, you did an amazing job. Your performance, of course, was amazing. Your, your stage presence, of course, was amazing. Um, man, I, I can't say anything else. I'm guessing I'm going to have to sum it up with... Wow. <laughs> thank you. Listen, and at this point, what more can be said? Ben Will, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us thank and you. for being our final act of the night. Mm -hmm. So we are going to keep this thing going by going into a bit of deliberate... Oh, bye! Oh, <laughs> but no, it's fine! <laughs> by, both, by going into a bit of deliberation. So thank you so much, and please stay tuned. <laughs> 10 moving performances, and these finalists did not make it easy for our judges. So before we announce anything, I definitely want to hear from you judges. This has been quite the night. You've heard from 10 amazingly talented performers. So if we can just go down the line and let these performers know how you feel just one final time. Aurora, can you give us any advice? I, I want to thank everyone for such dynamic performances and poetry tonight. And I want to just tell you, just keep in your mind, no matter what happens, say, never give up. I will never give up. And I want you all to go and look in the mirror every morning and stare at yourself and tell yourself, if I am a poet. Thank you. That's Beautiful. I'm going to say that myself in the mirror. <laughs> Thank you so much for that wisdom and that advice. Essence, is there any last words that you would give to any of these performers? I would like to say each of you did an amazing job. You guys are each winners in your own right. I mean, 10 finalists, you had to, you had to perform in order to get to this point in time. So, matter, so no matter what happens from this point out, understand that you guys are each winners in your own right. And I just want to thank you for your amazing performances. Thank you. Thank you. And Donovan, last but certainly not least, what words of wisdom would you impart to these performers tonight? Well, I just want to say thank you all. I'm honored to have been in your presence, honored to have um, heard the authentic spilling of your souls on stage tonight. It was a true blessing uh, to be able to listen to what you had to say. Um, I used to teach in an all boys school in the Bronx um, and every morning after announcements, we would uh, gather in the hall, raise a fist and say this stanza, uh, sharpen your eyes, tune your ears so you know what you see, understand what you hear minute by minute, hour by hour, as we know our story, we know our power. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful, beautiful words of wisdom to take with us tonight. So I told these performers, I feel like Tyra Banks. I got three cards in my hand, okay? But it is true that only one person will be named the 2022 Motown Mike Spoken Word Artist of the Year. So it's time for the moment of truth. I have three names in front of me, and in no particular order, I would like Ife, Ari Lane, and Ben Will. <laughs> okay, how are you guys feeling? Woo! <laughs> Jitter, no words, no words, it's fine, it's fine, I've got the words for you, so. In third place, winning $1,000 cash prize and performance opportunity, we have Ari Lane. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. We're all excited over here. Yes, yes. Congratulations again, Ari Lane. In second place, winning 
$2,000 cash prize and performance opportunities, we have Ife. <laughs> Um, first and foremost, like all the incredible ladies that I'm sharing this stage with, y'all don't understand like how much it means to me to share this with y'all dynamic individuals. Like y'all are incredible. Like, and just to be in the same space with all of this love, this energy, this empowering energy, like it means so much to me. And then to like take this, like I quit my job to pursue being a performer. My last day is this Friday. I'm a, I'm wow. a fundraiser. I'm a nonprofit fundraiser, but like God been yelling at me, like been beating me upside the head, been losing sleep. Like it's time for you to move forward. Like, yeah. it's time. And so to have this moment, like it's confirmation. Like yeah. I'm trying not to run laps and pass out on the ground, but like I just feel so much gratitude in my heart uh, for like Motel, Mike, Hitsville, Dex, uh, the, the Spoke at Work conversation, Kim. Keith, Phoenix, uh, all our incredible judges. Like, I thank you. Yes. yes. And that is our show. Thank you so much for watching Motown Mike, the spoken word competition grand finale. And congratulations again to all of our finalists. Motown Museum's mission is to preserve, promote, and celebrate the authentic Motown story and is committed to providing access to education and resources for our artists and entrepreneurs in Detroit. Motown Mike, the spoken word competition, is just such an opportunity. We could not host productions like this without the generous support of viewers like you. If you would like to support the Motown Museum, please visit the website for more information. This competition was made possible with the generous support from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, National Endowments for the Arts, the Kresge Foundation, Michigan Arts and Culture Council, special thanks to the Motown Museum members and to all of you for watching.